Hey, here we are once again, CISSP soon to bees. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. I'm Colin Weaver. Every single day I ask you two questions to help you continue for your exam prep. Let's jump right in it. First question today, a lot of words. Uh, you have a web app that allows customers to connect to your server and view their private information. You want to make sure that somebody who's within radio range of their wireless access point at their home or at their office is unable to view that private information. Which of the following should you do? There's your answer choices. Go ahead and click uh, pause and then when you're ready, you got the answer, click play and we'll break each one down. Choice number one on the list says require SSH connections from everybody to your web server. No, uh, that we don't use SSH for the transmission of HTTP related information. You need something else. So that's not the right answer. Choice number two, implement TLS on your web server. Absolutely, this is the right answer. By implementing TLS for HTTP, you're gonna create a situation where anybody who connects to your website is gonna go in and negotiate an encrypted channel communication and it will be encrypted from end to end. From the moment that it leaves your server to the moment that it arrives on the client's web browser, the data is gonna be encrypted. Okay, this is gonna be true even if they don't bother to secure their wireless LAN. Third option on the list says that you should contact your customers and advise them to implement WPA2 with AES in order, on their wireless LANs in order to give the security that they need. While that would be very nice of you to go in and tell them to do that, A, you can't make sure that they do it, uh, B, they may already be doing it, and C, that would only secure the data from their client to the access point. That says nothing about the data as it continues its journey um, on towards your web server or across their, their wired network and anywhere else that it might go in its journey through the internet getting to you. So, it, you know, having AES with WPA2 on the access point is all well and good, but that just handles one little, one little slight little stage of the journey. You need security for the entire journey, which is why TLS was a better answer. Next choice on the list would be for you to go in and digitally sign all your traffic using RSA keys. Oh, that sounds all wonderful, but it has nothing to do with giving you the confidentiality that you need. Remember, stuff that's digitally signed just means that it has, uh, what, assuming this is a trusted key, that it's going to have some origin authentication as well as data integrity, uh, but it's not going to go in and uh, make your data secure or confidential. Next contender on the list says that you're going to require your customers to connect via an IPsec VPN. Uh, no, that's just going to introduce all manner of complexity to this that uh, simply really isn't going to be tolerated by your, uh, by your customers. So IPsec is awesome, VPNs are awesome, but not for be being a public website trying to give people access to a, a web interface or a web app that's going to let them go in and see their information. So not really the best solution here. Oh, another choice. Implement 802.1x on your switches and provide uh, instructions for your customers to do the same. Um, if my mom is your customer, you're going to have a problem. So, um, no, that's, it's just not going to work. 802.1x is awesome. Again, it's port-based access control and you can do all manner of wonderful things. However, it's not really going to help you in this particular scenario of trying to go in and get some end-to-end -end security for data passing from your web app to your customers. And then the very last choice on the list, which is just there just to confuse you if you had no idea what you were talking about, um, was for you to go in and use an IDS or an IPS to look for evidence of ARP flooding attacks on the network. Um, what an ARP flooding attack has to do with people being able to view your sensitive information, there's really no rhyme or reason to that, particularly across a wireless LAN. So this is just there to distract you and has absolutely no bearing whatsoever on what the right answer is. So you need end-to-end -end encryption for your data and the best way to do that, given the choices provided and the situation presented, is for you to go in and implement TLS on your web server. All right, question number two today. There's a picture right there of an IP packet. It's an attack. What kind of an attack is it? Here's the answer choices. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we'll break it all down. All right, first answer choice. Is it a TCP send flood? No, it is not. A TCP send flood is when you send an unrelenting number of TCP send requests to a server, and typically you will spoof the source IP address, thereby causing the server to respond back with send X and exhausting its capacity to respond to legitimate clients. The sheer quantity of information as well as the um, half open connections that are generated uh, by the server in response to these spoofed packets would be what a TCP send flood is. And that's not what this picture is uh, that you're looking at right here. 
Next batter up is a Fraggle. A Fraggle is a UDP-based amplification attack that's designed to allow you to send uh, packets to a broadcast address and then have them all respond back to a target node in order to overwhelm and flood it with traffic. Um, and that is not what is occurring here. So no, this is not a Fraggle, uh, nor is it a Smurf, even though a Smurf is not an answer choice that's listed here, but Smurfs and Fraggles are very similar kinds of attacks, uh, but this is neither. The next item on the list says that it's a land attack. Uh, yes, that's exactly what this is. It stands for Local Area Network Denial. The way that a land attack works is, is you send a packet to your victim. The source and destination IP address are the victim's ad address and the source and destination ports are the address. And if the system was vulnerable to it, it would create a loop where it kept responding to itself and it would ultimately cause the system to go in and crash. Next option on the list is it's a teardrop attack. Uh, no, it's not. We've already decided that it was a land attack. A teardrop attack is a fragmentation-based attack where you send uh, packets that have uh, malformed frame offsets causing the device to try and reassemble fragments of a packet in an order that's, that causes them to overlap on each other and the system can't handle it and it freaks out and causes an issue. Okay, so, but this is not what that is. And then the final choice on the list is a man in the middle attack. No, I just threw that in there just to have some extra choices to try and confuse you. Uh, nothing about this suggests that it's a man in the middle attack for doing that. Now, things like land attacks and teardrops attacks and fraggles and smurfs, uh, most of these attacks are attacks that, you, that, that IT people tell their kids about as scary stories at night. That if you, you know, if you don't protect your network, the fraggle's gonna come get you kind of stuff. Because the reality is, is that very few systems in a very long time have ever been vulnerable to these. You're typically going way back in history to go in and say, oh, when's the last time something was vulnerable to a fraggle or, or to, a, to a land attack or something like that. Now, here's where you gotta be vigilant. Just because systems aren't currently vulnerable to these things, and they're largely academic as far as descriptions of different kinds of attacks, doesn't mean that a system might not suddenly become vulnerable to it again. And that has happened from time to time over the years where a system that was uh, not vulnerable to, say, a land attack, say through a patch or an update, suddenly became vulnerable to a land attack again. And so just because we don't really expect them to be things that are kind of happening every day, it, we have to remain vigilant and making sure that we can recognize these attacks when we see them. And so that's really more than anything why they're included in academic texts like you would find for a CISSP certification, uh, not because they're necessarily things that you face every single day as far as attack types that are out there. So keep that in mind as, as you're going in and looking at these things going, wow, you know, it's Windows XP Service Pack 2 that was last vulnerable to this. Yeah, but it's going to be interesting one day when we wake up and realize that an update to Windows 10 has now caused it to become vulnerable to it again. Okay, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but maybe. And just for good measure, even though something like a Fraggle really isn't a valid attack, there are semi-modified versions of it that are out there, like a DNS amplification attack, which is a very legitimate attack that still exists, where people are going in and sending spoof requests to DNS servers and, and spoofing the source IP address in order to get tons and tons and tons of DNS responses coming back to uh, the, the target node. And because a DNS query um, can contain significantly smaller quantities of information than the subsequent DNS response, you get uh, an amplification attack that can actually be quite effective. So, you know, Smurfs and Fraggles aren't really things that we worry about anymore, but uh, newer, more, say, advanced versions like a DNS amplification attack are legit. So I mean, it helps to understand these guys and where they all come from. All right, knocked them out. That was quick. First question was on making sure that you understand that TLS is going to provide you end-to-end -end encryption, um, including across somebody's wireless LAN. Even if they don't have any wireless LAN security implemented, uh, you're still going to benefit from TLS um, in that scenario. And the second question was making sure that you understand exactly what a LAN attack is and, and how you would recognize it in a packet structure. Um, and then also just to make sure that you're prepared to go in and, and understand and encounter or when you encounter you know, something like a teardrop attack or what the description of those things are. Because um, almost invariably, those things are going to show up in some way, shape, or form from an exam perspective. So be ready for them. Um, I hope you dug these questions. I hope they help you with your studies. I'll be back tomorrow asking you two more. Make sure you click like and subscribe, both of them, in that order. That would be awesome. And see you then. Bye.